Hi, I'm Dale Johnson. I'm the Adaptive Program Manager at Arizona State University. And I'm going to talk to you today about how we're using adaptive courseware and active learning to transform the student experience at Arizona State. Now, the reason why this is important to us and to our students is because we understand that individuals learn at different rates and have different learning abilities. Uh, this is something that we've been studying for many years and we did an analysis back in 2012 of students that were studying between the uh, August and December of that year and we looked at their rate of success in the course starting with uh, zero lessons and going up to 34 lessons. And what we found is that some students actually completed the course in as few as three weeks where other students needed more time in order to be successful. And you'll see that some students delayed and then completed very late in the semester. So those revelations indicated to us that the learners needed to be treated individually. And we started to experiment with adaptive learning courseware as a result. Now, the ideal behind adaptive learning courseware is that we want to deliver the right lesson to the right student at the right time. That's very easy to say and very difficult to do. Uh, we spent a lot of time working with partners and programmers to develop systems to be able to realize that expectation. Those systems have been employed in a number of different disciplines. We began in mathematics and then we did biology, chemistry, physics. Also, we've done uh, psychology and US history. So there are a variety of different subjects now that are available in adaptive courseware. This is an example of mathematics, in this case, college algebra. Historically, we've only had about a 55% success rate in this course. Uh, what we found is that we tried a number of different uh, experiments to improve our student success rate without breaking through that barrier. Uh, eventually, we decided to try an adaptive program. So in the fall of 2016, we decided to employ Alex, which is an adaptive software from McGraw-Hill. Alex provided us with an opportunity to personalize the learning experience so that every student had an individual path through the curriculum. And we found that that was tremendously successful. Over here in the results side, we were able to increase student success by over 20 percentage points for the overall class. And perhaps more importantly, for students that were low ability math students, which had succeeded very uh, infrequently in the past, their success rate went up 28.3 percentage points. So what we've done is we've increased the success of both groups of students. That was a breakthrough for us. It led to the realization that adaptive courseware is the opportunity to improve all of student learning in the future. Now, we also realize that this is a market in transition. Uh, what we found is that while we started back in 2011 with our initial experiments, many, many other universities are starting to join the process now. And as this evolution occurs, it's increasing in speed. We expect that in the next five years, adaptive courseware will be commonplace in a variety of different disciplines. We're working with those vendors to accelerate the market and increase the rate of success for our students. We realize that in order to do that, we have to understand adaptive technology. So I'll take a little bit of time to explain how adaptive courseware works and what we've seen from vendors in these areas. Uh, the first thing I want to describe is that with inside the adaptive system, there are two moving parts that we've discovered. One is lesson sequence, and the other is content selection. Lesson sequence indicates the order of lessons that a student will receive. As I mentioned in College Algebra, we had 3,200 students in, in Alex, and it's possible that there were 3,200 different lesson sequences because of that. Uh, one of the things that we've discovered is when you have these systems at scale, you can have that kind of variation and it increases the likelihood that the student is getting the right lesson. The second piece of this puzzle is content selection. Content selection is important because in the faculty's mind, they want to be able to deliver the proper video or the proper reading or the proper assessment question. And this is where the system develops a recommendation to deliver to the student. Well, how does it do that? 
what's guiding the adaptation? We've found that there are four different techniques that are commonly employed. There's algorithm, assessment, association, and agency. Each of them has a place in the development of adaptive systems. Uh, algorithms are extremely sexy but difficult to do. Uh, we find that it's hard to develop a database that's big enough to deliver the algorithmic recommendations. So in order to get to that level of development, you need other techniques. Things like assessment, where a student takes a quiz, and if they are unable to answer the questions, they're given information, additional content, and remedial material. That is much more viable when you're starting to develop a new system because the entire design can be programmed in. Uh, and in a similar way, association is something that you can build in advance of the implementation of the course and then iterate and improve over time to ensure that the courseware is continually improving. Uh, association is the relationship between the lessons. And I mentioned sequence is the uh, principle behind adaptivity, but who decides the sequence? In our case, the faculty members are deciding who is, or which lesson is going to appear first, and that way that design and that decision tree is laid out in advance. Finally, agency is a new technique that's been employed recently to allow the students to provide us with feedback so that we can use that information to guide them in the future. An example of this is in McGraw-Hill product called LearnSmart, they place a Likert scale at the bottom of every page which has five different data points on it. The student selects their level of understanding based upon their uh, studies. If they say they don't understand something, they give the lesson a one, the system uses that information to recommend additional content. If they say, I do understand, and they give that lesson a five, then they move on to the next lesson. This is a, a valuable feedback loop that didn't exist in prior systems, and it's an exciting evolution in the development of adaptive courseware. Uh, next, we talk a little bit about how we use the systems. Uh, we're looking for the proper tool for the proper job. We don't want to use adaptive courseware to do something that it's not built for. What we found is that it's very effective at the lower levels of Bloom's taxonomy. So for example, in remembering and understanding, adaptive courseware is extremely effective. And what we want to do is we want to apply that technology to this problem. In the use of adaptive courseware, we find that students are able to repeat material or to refresh their knowledge, and they're able to use the system to develop those basic skills. Once they've done that, we ask them to apply those skills in class to active learning. That allows the student to develop higher order thinking skills like critical thinking, decision making, communication skills, problem solving skills, all of the things that will make them successful in the professional world. When we do the combination, we get a model that is both high tech and high touch. So we get the benefits of the advanced technology with the contact in class with a professor. That looks like a cycle to a student. The process of information acquisition, which traditionally was a lecture in class, if we think about this as the first step in the learning process. Students are reading textbooks, watching videos, doing simulations in the adaptive courseware. Then they move on to the analysis of that. They get into the uh, quizzing and practice problems. Finally, they get to class and they apply that information to problems and case studies in class before completing the cycle, which is assimilation, in a quiz or essay format. So each of those steps in the process adds value to the student. The adaptive courseware delivers the first two and the active learning delivers the second two. This sequence is repeated throughout the course so that the students get used to doing the prep work before coming to class and then delivering the 
uh, active learning case studies once they're in the classroom. Uh, we found that the students are much more satisfied with this model because it allows them to explore the next level of knowledge and the faculty members are also more satisfied because they get to challenge the students to do the problem solving. Uh, I'm Dale Johnson and I'm uh, excited to be here talking to you today about adaptive learning. If you'd like to get more information, feel free to contact me and I'd be happy to follow up.